Hi, it's Donna Donna Ray from Oceanside Farms in Homer, Alaska. It is great to learn from other small farms. Today we're going to share our video interview of the staff at Twitter Creek Gardens in Homer, Alaska, and share some of their wisdom and their materials about produce processing. We hope you find some great inspiration. Hi there, I'm Emily Garrity, owner and operator of Twitter Creek Gardens, and we're going to give you a quick tour of our wash station today. And we sell to uh, the Homer Farmer's Market. We sell online through the Alaska Food Hub. We do a CSA share, and we do uh, deliveries to local restaurants here in the Homer area. And hi, I'm Allison O'Neill. Um, I've been working here on Twitter Creek, uh, Twitter Creek Gardens for uh, seven years now. Um, so yeah, looking forward to uh, sharing what kind of what we've been learning um, and evolving with our wash station here. Okay, so here's uh, the skeleton of and the beginning of our future wash station. Um, it's hugely improved from what we used to have, which was just a pop-up tent with a couple of makeshift tables and some harvest bins for washing. So we're a little step up, but look forward to our long-term goals. But I'll just give you a tour of what we have now. Um, I'm kind of in the Grand Central Station of our farm. We have our communications board, our organization board. Um, we write our orders down here, what we're going to harvest and wash and pack and do for the week. So every Monday morning or Tuesday morning when a crew is here, we, ha we meet here in the wash station and we talk about our goals for the week. So this doubles as kind of our communications and, and centralized location to have all the information sharing done. And as we walk, we have our wash station broken up into three parts. We have a wash part, we have a pack part, and we have our cold room. So the flow is um, produce comes in from the farm, gathers in two different spots of our wash station. This is our spray and dunk station, so Allison's working there. We have a, just an old aluminum grate we got from a salvage yard that we're using for our spray station. We lay all of our roots out um, on to the grate at one time and then go through and spray them down and then move into dunking. Allison will show you that in a minute. And then over here, here is our green spinning station and also we double as a dunk station here, a quick dunk station. So dirty greens, dirty bundles of kale, broccoli, whatever, is all stacked right here in this space and it moves through a triple dunk system, through our salad green spinner, and into drying totes. So right now we're just using um, these 18 gallon bins we bought at Fred Meyers um, as our both of our dunk station, we use them as our harvest totes, and we try to keep those separate, and then as our drain totes, so we'll put wet vegetables into the bin and we just drill holes in the bottom. So when they go into the cold room, um, they have overnight to drain. We're normally harvesting. So this is the other half of our wash station. It's kind of divided just by a little table here. This is our weigh and pack part before going into our cold room like I showed you before. So we have a big scale here for full totes of vegetables. We can weigh all at once. Um, we just put a tote on our little Rubbermaid on Amazon, 90 bucks or something like that. Tote on. Tear our tote. And then we can move that off and put a full bin of whatever produce we're weighing onto it. Um, if we're bundling salad turnips or onions or any of those things, we just use a little uh, grocery store scale. And that works really well for smaller quantities like pound bundles or pound and a half bundles. Um, and then we record everything. Once it's all weighed, we go to our kind of record station and we have a really basic spreadsheet. Um, the date, what crop, where it's going, where in the field we harvested it and how many pounds. So we record everything that we've taken out of the field. And then this table is kind of designated for our stickering and um, ceiling and whatever else. It's a rolly table so it gets moved around. It's really user friendly. We have all of our stuff in waterproof bins, our bags, our twist ties, all labeled, um, salad bags, harvest log. Everything's 
waterproof, so when the hose, the hosing on that section gets crazy, this all is protected. Um, we just have a basic, we just buy these basic bags um, in these thousand package boxes, and we have a little sticker roller. Okay, so this table here is our bagging station or our labeling station. We just have these boxes we um, buy on Amazon. Again, thousand bags per box. Um, I don't have the dimensions in my mind, but I'd be happy to share that if you ever wanted to know. And we just have a basic sticker roller. Um, we get our labels done with for from grower discount labels, which is advertised through the Growing for Market publication, excellent publication for market gardeners. Um, and stickers come out, tag the bag, and then that's ready to fill with salad greens or baby pop choy or whatever smaller items. I did that one upside down. Um, needs to be bagged. And I'll show you when I have greens how we steal them up. So that's kind of this station. Again, like our our full communications board, labeling, all the bags and twist ties and things we need for packaging, um, other like bags for our CSA shares, harvest crates, record keeping station. So the flow is going through the wash station into the way record label package into our cold room. And okay, so we're walking into our cold room and our cold room is just run, um, it's an insulated, two by four framed box, insulated with two inch foam. It's not finished, there'll be FRP all along the inside, but right now you'll just see the exposed insulation. It's run by an air conditioning unit and a cool bot. And um, the cool bot bypasses, I don't really actually know how to explain it, but the cool bot bypasses the um, air conditioning unit, so it allows the air conditioning unit to go cooler than it's programmed for. So we keep our um, cold room between 38 and 40 degrees on harvest days. So we have, um, again, just our regular harvest bins we utilize for everything. Those are all, um, have those drain holes in the bottom. And we just take chalk and we label on the facing outside what's in the tote so it's really easy to find when we need to or when we're loading up to market, we'll know what we have to have on our table. And this um, is about five feet by eight feet and it fits about 60 of these harvest totes. So it's a pretty, a pretty good size for what we need for our size farm. Okay. So as Emily was saying earlier, um, this is the, mainly the root wash station. Um, so they'll all come in right here. Uh, just a couple of things. We do bundle in the field. It makes it a lot quicker uh, for washing. Um, one really important thing that we like to do is make sure that this is right side up and not upside down. <laughs> um, just a little thing that, that is really important for us. Um, we also like to stack. When we harvest, we like to stack them a certain way so it's very easy to grab when you're going to wash. Um, and in order to actually fill more bundles into the tote, we kind of mix and match. So then I'll switch them and go this way. And then have four going the other way. And I can fit a lot more bundles in the one tote. Um, and we primarily try to harvest as much as we can. But as soon as we harvest roots, we want, to we want to bring them in right away, especially the white roots, salad turnips, daikons, um, even the purple gut turnips. Uh, once they just dry a little bit, it makes it really challenging to wash. Um, so we really try to actually harvest a lot of the, we call them quick grabs, things that don't need to be washed right away, that can sit in the shade, and then we can bring a whole load um, from our flatbed truck in that kind of expedite the washing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, lay all of these out on the spray table and then I can show you our spray and our double dump. Okay, so um, here we're about to spray our vegetables. Um, we like to use like a high pressure uh, spray nozzle as opposed to kind of your um, general garden spray nozzle. Just has a little bit more pressure, um, kind of helps with 
getting the vegetables uh, really clean. So I'm going to go ahead and start spraying. And kind of what I like to do is I spray a lot and I'll just fill this whole tote um, with the salad turnips and then I'll switch over to this station and then finish the double dunk um, into the uh, drainer. So as you can see that high pressure spray nozzle really gets them nice and clean um, and we really like to have our vegetables super clean. <laughs> Another thing is to, it's really important that you do not want to spray the greens because it can bruise them um, really easily. So it's pretty important to, especially with the high power uh, sprayer, to just spray the roots. Do you ever sell them without the greens? Um, we, the salad turnips we have it, but with the other roots, beets or purple top turnips, daikon, things that maybe didn't sell uh, mm -hmm. at farmer's market or um, we over harvested, uh, we'll just de-green them and we'll keep them in the cool room. And then we can still sell them as just the kind of root vegetables. And then we also have people that we, starting to come into the later season, we have a couple people that we put together orders for for storage. So some of the purple top turnips that do come back, we'll degreen them and that will be part of their um, storage crop for the winter. being a little picky but another thing that w that I do is this if I do put them in there and let them sit for just a little bit I can then spray them again before it goes into the second dump <laughs> for the double dump go into the tote and then we lay the vegetables the same way in the tote um, as we harvest them Saying all of these totes do have the drain holes, so they'll be able to drain uh, overnight. Here's the, here's the bin that we harvested into from the field, and they're just loose um, mixed baby greens. And our wash system is just to pick up the bin, pour in a couple handfuls into our first dump with our baby greens we do a three dump system and all we're doing in the dump tank is we're gently swishing it around and this bin helps get off some of the soil or if there's slugs or anything in there the slugs will sink to the bottom of the water and your greens will be left on top so we give it a good swish and then we just pick up handfuls at a time put it into the next tote Give it another swish, hoping to get the rest of the dirt and any slugs out. And then kind of just a final insurance rinse in the third coat. Again, just a gentle swish. And then from the third coat, we go right into our spins basket. And these are just um, basic fish baskets you can buy here at Catch Back Gear Shed, or you can buy them online. They're just a, a bushel fish basket. I think it's a bushel. So we fill 
fish basket about two thirds of the way full. If it gets too full, greens will fly out or um, they don't get dried very well. So you want to leave a little space in the top of the fish basket. Drop it right into our green spinner, which is just a repurposed washing machine. Um, it only does the spin cycle. It has an emergency stop button and a timer, and that's it. So our emergency stop button is out, and we can put it on for one minute spin. While that's spinning, we have a second fish basket we put in line and then just keep the process going so there's very little breaks between. Got it? Okay, so this batch is done spinning. And we just take the fish bin, dump it right into our drainy totes. The whole thing falls out all at once. Next basket's ready to go in. And then from here, we'll take our wash screen over to our way station. And this is where I take an empty tote. Put it on the scale, make sure that it's paired. And then I can put the whole bin of greens right on the scale. Tells me I have 5.6 pounds of greens and then that number will go into my harvest log. And then the next step with greens is I'll take these gloves off. These are the gloves that we use for the washing part of the station. They're nice because they go up high so you can get your arms all up in the bins and not get wet. The other nice thing about these rubber gloves is you can wash them and sanitize them so they can stay really safe and clean for your wash portion. Um, and then we have our little gloves dryer right here and everybody has their own named gloves so there's no glove swapping, especially during COVID times. And then in the pack station, we put on the little nitro gloves Okay, so I already showed you how to, we sticker our bags. So I have a whole box full of already stickered bags. And we sell all of our um, greens bags to restaurants and at the farmer's market primarily in half pound bags. So straight out of the same wash bin. We fill our bag of greens, put it in the little uh, grocery store scale, half pound or just over. And then the last step for our greens, we bunch it, give it a twist. And this was, I think this cost $20. It was well worth every penny just to make this portion fast. And you have a sealed cute little bag of greens. If these greens are going to a grocery store or to the online food hub, somewhere where we're not personally distributing the greens and can communicate what's in the bag, we just use the simple Avery 5160 mailing label sheets and make these little greens tags. That goes right underneath our logo. And then that's what you would find on the grocery store shelf. Um, as far as marketing our product, there's actually, I don't know, seven or eight farmers in the Homer area, and a lot of us are growing the same things, and um, for us, it's really important to make sure that our vegetables are super clean. It's really important that they're presented well, which is why we take the time to make sure our twist ties are on the right way, 
and why we took the time to have an artist design a cute logo for us and everything that goes out of this wash station and onto a restaurant shelf or through the farmer's market has our name on it. Name recognition is a big deal. Um, the more somebody sees your name, the more apt they are to buy it when they see it in a grocery store or online or anything like that. So hoodies, hats, t-shirts, whatever you can do to just, if you're trying to set yourself apart and really make a name for yourself, it, it helps to have a cute logo and clean, tidy um, props going out. Oceanside Farms would like to thank Twitter Creek Gardens for this video interview and support from Cali and the Small Farms Project and the USDA 2501 funding. Happy growing!